Greetings. I'm going to answer the questions I post to myself the best I can. I can't promise I'm going to do the best job at it, but they're the best answers I got for myself. And it would have been really encouraging and helpful and maybe not so um, traumatizing if at any point in the last four years of attempting, somebody had given me something close to these answers directly and in person rather than whatever else has happened. So perhaps if you're somebody that feels like you've been disappeared or isolated or misrepresented or attempted for defacement and defamation into performing a role that's completely unacceptable, then maybe at least nothing else, the uh, sincerity will uh, help encourage you to be the same. The first question I'm um, having to do with the um, concern or actually the statement, the candidate statement regarding concerns about standards. I agree with you. I think a number of standards need to be addressed. I think there needs to be a revision of the National Institutes of Standards testing standards regarding cyber vulnerability certification. Um, the policy regarding use of certifications for compliance, including anti-money laundering uh, aspects, as well as uh, potentially using them in a value-added merit-based process that can allow for the accrual of credit um, and a manner in which to account for intangible property contributions that can also provide safe nodes at which disaggregation can occur in the event that there is suspicion of or there is an alert that there is an act of financial fraud that could prevent or could present a security threat. I've actually outlined this on my website a little bit, and I have much more comprehensive pro uh, policies that I've been attempting to actually uh, systematize and implement since the beginning of 2018 officially. It's a multi-stage process, and I also understand it goes back to um, efforts that, if nothing else, could have been used to support this kind of process as early as 1974 when there was a specific uh, recommendation for a piece of legislation that had some of the substance of what would have been the necessary uh, uh, systemization to make such a thing possible. Um, but then also, I believe, is covered by um, the FARIA, the Financial Institute's uh, Reform and Reconciliation uh, Act of 1989, I believe. As a matter of fact, there are specific elements of this uh, legislation concerning bond audits and concerning other kinds of disclosure on financial arrangements that are very essential um, and are very much connected to maintaining standards and also uh, de-emphasizing anything that could challenge the legitimization of standards by trying to reduce financial standards that could then put pressure on uh, some sort of relinquishment of higher standards in industrial technologies. Um, I also think that um, it's important for industrial certifications to address concerns regarding uh, specifically FAA requirements around certifications while also addressing proprietary uh, information concerning the companies of concern, I do believe it is possible to not necessarily have to mandate a federally based standard regarding certifications for different companies, but there should be baseline standards that each company has to be able to demonstrate as part of their proprietary certification process. And then they have to be able to demonstrate that there are also areas that they can back up where if necessary disaggregation can occur in order to investigate an incident. And in consideration of that, I know this is something the FAA specifically has been talking about for a few years. Um, and more than that, I also know that there has been a lot of obstruction and there have been pretenses at civil suits concerning a number of airliners that have gone down in the last couple of years. And I support a uh, rescission of any sort of non-disclosed agreements that would prevent um, access to any information or evidence that could potentially be used for criminal pr 